Welcome to C Programming Lecture 7. In this lecture we will look into the multi-selection switch statement that can help to write C programs to select different chunks of code when a variable equals different values. Switch statement is a multi-selection statement. A chosen variable value is checked whether it equals one among the listed cases. Each case contains the appropriate chunk of code to be included when the variable value equals the case value and continue the rest of the program. Switch statement allows a default case, which is none of the listed cases and appropriate chunk of code can be included when the variable value not equals any of the listed case values and continue the rest of the program. Let us add the feature of accepting units for the RLC quantities in the C program that calculates the poles of a low-pass filter, using if-else statement, after taking the RLC values through the keyboard and display the poles on the monitor. Resistance I units can be ohm or kilo ohm or mega ohm. Character O or K or M can be input as the units for the R value and in the C program. Using a switch statement the input unit's characters can be checked and the input R value can be appropriately scaled to a value in ohms. Inductance L units can be Henry or millihenry or microhenry. Character H or M or U can be input as the units for the L value and in the C program. Using a switch statement the input unit's character can be checked and the input L value can be appropriately scaled to a value in Henry. Capacitance C units can be farad or millifarad or microfarad or nanofarad. Character F or M or U or N can be input as the units for the C value and in the C program. Using a switch statement the input unit's character can be checked and the input C value can be appropriately scaled to a value in Farad. In all the three switch statements, the default case can be utilized to inform the user that the unit's character entered is not one among the acceptable choices and the program will consider the input R or L or C values and their respective basic units. Beginning lines of the C program up to line 17 are exactly same as the C program we have written for the understanding of the use of if-else statement in lecture 6. Lines 12 to 17 are written for the structure named IISIS definition consisting of all the required variables and arrays for the computation of the poles of RLC low pass filter second order system. In the previous C program, in the beginning of the main function, structure named LPF of type IISIS was declared and then the variables and arrays defined inside the structure were utilized for the calculation of the low pass filter poles. In C programming language, a feature is available to make type definition to simplify the way tailor-made definitions are used for declaration of different types of quantities. In line 20, type def which is the type definition is written to create a shortcut for the structure IISIS declaration as a single tailor-made keyword named IISIS LPF. We can use any allowed keyword as the name for the type def. Here we used IISIS LPF as it is for the low pass filter second order system. With this type def definition, further in the C program the shortcut keyword IISIS LPF is available to declare any required structure of type IISIS, whose full definition is written in lines 12 to 17. With the type def for the structure IISIS named as IISIS LPF in line 20. Declaration of structure named LPF of type IISIS become very simple as IISIS LPF LPF. Like any other declaration, in line 25, it is written as structure type def name IISIS LPF followed by the required structure name LPF. If we don't need the initiation of the structure, then in line 25 it can be written simply as IISIS LPF LPF semicolon. Like any other type of declaration, structure declaration can also be initiated with the desired values. Here the initial values are all zero. Note that the entire set of initiation values for all the variables and the arrays within the structure is enclosed within braces. Single zero within the braces can initiate all the variables and arrays elements values as zero. 
But here, we explicitly initiate each and every variables and array elements within the structure as zeros. First three zeros are the initial values for the variables RL and C within the structure LPF of type IISIS, as defined in line 13. Next three zeros are the initial values for the variables W and Q and Z within the structure LPF of type IISIS as defined in line 14. Next three zeros within braces are the initial values for the one-dimensional array COF of size 3 within the structure LPF of type IISIS as defined in line 15. Final four zeros within braces are the initial values for the two-dimensional array Paul of row size 2 and column size 2 within the structure LPF of type IISIS as defined in line 16. Note that the row elements are separately enclosed within their respective braces to make the two-dimensional array elements initiation very explicit. One set of outer braces enclosing all the elements of the multi-dimensional array and separate set of braces enclosing the elements of every inner dimension will help to write the values of the array elements correctly. Here for the two-dimensional array, Paul with two rows and two columns. One set of outer braces enclosing all the four elements and separates two sets of braces enclosing the elements of two rows are appropriately written. Declaration of character variable IP unit. To store the keyboard input RLC units, one after another to check with the switch statement for its character value and then scale the RLC input values to the respective basic units values of resistance inductance and capacitance. Line 30. Printf statement displays the message on the monitor to inform the user to input the R value and alphabet character either O or K or M respectively for ohm or kilo ohm or mega ohm units for the resistance. Using line 31 scan F statement, keyboard input R value and units alphabet character are respectively stored in the memory address location of LPF.R and IP unit. Lines 33 to 54 are the entire set of switch statement lines written to check the IP unit character variable alphabet is either O or K or M and appropriately the R value is rescaled to the basic unit value of resistance. Line 33 is the first line of the switch statement which starts with the keyword switch. The quantity that needs to be checked for various cases is to be mentioned within the parentheses. Here IP unit character variable is written within the parentheses to check whether it is either O or K or M. As the full scope of the switch statement extends up to line 54, semicolon should not be written at the end of line 33. Opening brace in line 34 and closing brace in line 54, enclose the full scope of the switch statement. Note that all the lines 35 to 53 within the scope of the switch statement are written with one indent spacing to maintain structured C programming. Lines 35 to 38 are the complete set of lines written for the character O checking case for the IP unit character variable of the switch statement. Line 35 is the first line written for the character lowercase o, checking case for the IP unit character variable of the switch statement. Keyword case is written followed by the value that needs be to check for and the line is ended with colon. In the switch statement IP unit character variable is checked whether it is lowercase o character. Remember that the single character has to be enclosed in single quotes in C programming language. If for instance the quantity checked in the switch statement is an integer variable then this line must be written as keyword case followed by integer value say for example 1 and the line end with colon. In this case there should not be any quotes enclosing the integer 1. Line 36 is written for the character uppercase O, checking case for the IP unit character variable of the switch statement. Thus we allow the user to input either lowercase O or uppercase O as the unit zone for the resistance. If we wish to keep it strictly, lowercase O is the only allowed character input for the resistance unit zone, then this line must be removed. 
Lines 37 and 38 are the full set of statements that are to be included in the case of IP unit is either lower case O or upper case O. There are no braces that are enclosing the scope of each case within the switch statement. Note that one indent spacing is added to lines 37 and 38 to maintain the structured C programming. Line 37 is the arithmetic assignment statement to rescale the resistance value LPF.R by times 1. This rescaling of LPF.R value is carried out for the case either lower case O or upper case O as IP unit character that represents the unit's ohm for the resistance. Multiplying by 1 is not going to change the value of LPF.R, but here it is written just for the completeness. Break statement and line 38 represents the end of the body of this case and the program controller should go to line 55 that is just after the end of the entire switch statement. Lines 40 and 41 are written for the characters lowercase k or uppercase k checking case for the IP unit character variable of the switch statement. Thus we allow the user to input either lowercase k or uppercase k as the unit's kilo ohm for the resistance. If we wish to keep it strictly, lowercase k is the only allowed character input for the resistance unit's kilo ohm. Then line 41 must be removed. Line 42 is the arithmetic assignment statement to rescale the resistance value LPF.R by times 1000. This rescaling of LPF.R value is carried out for the case either lowercase k or uppercase k as IP unit character that represents the unit's kilo ohm for the resistance. Multiplying by 1000 will convert the value of LPF.R from kilo ohm to ohm. Break statement and line 43 represents the end of the body of this case and the program controller should go to line 55 that is just after the end of the entire switch statement. Lines 45 and 46 are written for the characters uppercase M or lowercase M checking case for the IP unit character variable of the switch statement. Thus we allow the user to input either uppercase M or lowercase M as the unit's mega ohm for the resistance. If we wish to keep it strictly, uppercase M is the only allowed character input for the resistance unit's mega ohm. Then line 46 must be removed. Line 47 is the arithmetic assignment statement to rescale the resistance value LPF.R by times 1 million. This rescaling of LPF.R value is carried out for the case either uppercase M or lowercase M as IP unit character that represents the unit's mega ohm for the resistance. Multiplying by 1 million will convert the value of LPF.R from mega ohm to ohm. Break statement and line 48 represents the end of the body of this case and the program controller should go to line 55 that is just after the end of the entire switch statement. Line 50 is the default case that is written for all other characters apart from the six different characters checking cases for the IP unit character variable of the switch statement. Thus if the user input any character through the keyboard by mistake for the resistance units then this default case will be considered when the input unit character is not one among the lower and upper cases of O or K or M. Line 51 is the arithmetic assignment statement to rescale the resistance value LPF.R by times 1. This rescaling of LPF.R value is carried out for the default case. Multiplying by 1 is not going to change the value of LPF.R, but here it is written just for the completeness. Line 52 printf statement displays the message on the monitor that the input character for the resistance units is not one among the allowed characters and the units is considered as ohm. Break statement in line 53 represents the end of the body of the default case and the program control should go to line 55 that is just after the end of the entire switch statement. This break statement is redundant as it is the last line of the switch statement. But here it is written just for the completeness.
Line 57. Printf statement displays the message on the monitor to inform the user to input the L value and alphabet character either uppercase H or M or U respectively for Henry or Millie Henry or Micro Henry units for the inductance. Using line 58 scan F statement, keyboard input L value and units alphabet character are respectively stored in the memory address location of LPF.L and IP unit. Note that the IP unit character variable value is now overwritten with the inductance unit's input character. This can be used for rescaling the input inductance value stored in the LPF.L double variable memory location. Line 60 to 81 of the entire set of switch statement lines written to check the IP unit character variable alphabet is either H or M or U and appropriately the L value is rescaled to the basic unit value of inductance. Line 62 to 65 are the complete set of lines written for the character H checking case for the IP unit character variable of the switch statement. Line 62 and 63 are written for the characters uppercase H or lowercase H checking case for the IP unit character variable of the switch statement. Thus we allow the user to input either uppercase H or lowercase H as the unit's Henry for the inductance. If we wish to keep it strictly, uppercase H is the only allowed character input for the inductance unit's Henry. Then line 63 must be removed. Line 64 is the arithmetic assignment statement to rescale the inductance value LPF.L divided by 1. This rescaling of LPF.L value is carried out for the case either uppercase H or lowercase H as IP unit character that represents the unit's Henry for the inductance. Dividing by 1 is not going to change the value of LPF.L, but here it is written just for the completeness. Break statement and line 65 represents the end of the body of this case and the program controller should go to line 82 that is just after the end of the entire switch statement. Line 67 and 68 are written for the characters lowercase m or uppercase m checking case for the IP unit character variable of the switch statement. Thus we allow the user to input either lowercase m or uppercase m as the unit's milli henry for the inductance. If we wish to keep it strictly, lowercase m is the only allowed character input for the inductance unit's milli henry, then line 68 must be removed. Line 69 is the arithmetic assignment statement to rescale the inductance value lpf.l divided by 1000. This rescaling of LPF.L value is carried out for the case either lowercase m or uppercase m as IP unit character that represents the unit's milli henry for the inductance. Dividing by 1000 will convert the value of LPF.L from milli henry to henry. Break statement and line 70 represents the end of the body of this case and the program controller should go to line 82 that is just after the end of the entire switch statement. Line 72 and 73 are written for the characters lowercase u or uppercase u checking case for the IP unit character variable of the switch statement. Thus we allow the user to input either lowercase u or uppercase u as the unit's micro henry for the inductance. If we wish to keep it strictly, lowercase u is the only allowed character input for the inductance unit's micro henry, then line 73 must be removed. Line 74 is the arithmetic assignment statement to rescale the inductance value lpf.l divided by 1 million. This rescaling of LPF.L value is carried out for the case either lowercase u or uppercase u as IP unit character that represents the unit's micro henry for the inductance. Dividing by 1 million will convert the value of LPF.L from micro henry to henry. Break statement and line 75 represents the end of the body of this case and the program controller should go to line 82 that is just after the end of the entire switch statement. 
Line 77 is the default case that is written for all other characters apart from the six different characters. Checking cases for the IP unit character variable of the switch statement. Thus if the user input any character through the keyboard by mistake for the inductance units then this default case will be considered when the input unit character is not one among the lower and upper cases of H or M or U. Line 78 is the arithmetic assignment statement to rescale the inductance value LPF.L divided by 1. This rescaling of LPF.L value is carried out for the default case. Dividing by 1 is not going to change the value of LPF.L, but here it is written just for the completeness. Line 79 printf statement displays the message on the monitor that the input character for the inductance units is not one among the allowed characters and the units is considered as Henry. Break statement in line 80 represents the end of the body of the default case and the program control should go to line 80 to that is just after the end of the entire switch statement. This break statement is redundant as it is the last line of the switch statement. But here it is written just for the completeness. Line 84. Printf statement displays the message on the monitor to inform the user to input the C value and alphabet character either uppercase C or M or U or N respectively for farad or millifarad or microfarad or nanofarad units for the capacitance. Using line 85 scanf statement. Keyboard input C value and units alphabet character are respectively stored in the memory address location of LPF.C and IP unit. Note that the IP unit character variable value is now overwritten with the capacitance unit's input character. This can be used for rescaling the input capacitance value stored in the LPF.C double variable memory location. Lines 87 to 113 are the entire set of switch statement lines written to check the IP unit character variable alphabet is either F or M or U or N and appropriately the C value is rescaled to the basic unit value of capacitance. Each capacitance unit's character check and default check cases are written appropriately for rescaling the input capacitance stored in the LPF.C memory location. These switch statement lines for rescaling the capacitance value are written similar to the low pass filter parameters resistance and inductance values rescaling according to the unit's character input by the user. Rest of the C program code to calculate the poles of the low pass filter second order system and to check whether both the poles locations are in the left half plane remain exactly same as the C program written for the if else statement in the previous lecture. Display of the execution of the exe file, input RLC values, respective units characters and final output are shown in the inset window. All the C program's examples discussed in this lecture are provided to Liam about the multi-selection switch statement and structures. Try to write C programs yourself to get more practice, experience and confidence in coding computer programs. In the next lecture, we will see how our loop repetition statement is useful to write C programs that can solve scientific and engineering problems.